I don't see why, in fact, I'm gonna change that. I don't see how you can put such importance on how you feel as a man because it makes you non-competitive. Well, but it makes you, what it does is it brings you into presence. And presence is the most powerful quality that you can have as a human being. And if you are not in touch with your feelings, if yeah. you disown them or you rationalize them in some way, you're not fully present. Completely agree. Right? So the, the reason we want to connect with the places we have fear or pain or sadness, yeah. right? Or anger, whatever it is, it's not, it's not to feel it and let ourselves be a slave to it. Yeah. It's just to let it come into our conscious awareness to know what it is. There's information there. It's data, right? And, and if we can be present with all that we feel, right, we're much more powerful beings. Now, it's super interesting you said that because you're right because I wouldn't consider myself a present person. I am always thinking about what must be done. I'm thinking about- Interesting. This, always. That you would, make, you would confess that. I'll You're confess. not a present person. No, I'm not present. If, if I'm present in the moment, I'm either on my computer talking to someone else millions of miles away or dealing with something else or I'm doing this podcasting about how I have to spar afterwards and then I've got a friend coming at 8.15 tonight. I have present? to see. I'm not present because things must be done and they no, must be no, organized. No, no, okay. this is, I'm not competitive if I'm present. I need to do things. Now, I'm, I, I'll agree with you. You're right. I'm not, I'm well, very rarely or, present. But here's my frame for presence, right? The reason I'm not all the way present, which is all the way here, is because there's something here that I don't want to feel. No, I would say there's two, there's two scenarios in which I am very present. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about them in a second. But I'm not a very present person. But I have sacrificed that idea of feeling presence and feeling happy in the moment for, let's say, absolute capability and legacy. But would you agree that being more present would give, give you more power? in certain scenarios. Well, I think that might be the reason I love fighting so much because that's the only time I feel present. Right. Because I have to be right there because one, I'm in pain and two, if I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be asleep. Are you not present right now? I am. Are you present with me? I'm paying attention. My, br my brain's on, I'm paying attention. Let, let your brain go and see what happens. I Just am. be here with me and don't like, stop thinking. I stop am. thinking. I, I can't stop thinking. Stop thinking. You can't, you can't stop thinking. If you can't stop thinking, you don't have control over your mind. All right, cool. So I stopped thinking, but... <laughs> and just be in the place where there's no thinking. Sure. And just feel yourself, sure. who you are, and I, see what happens. I, and see I, what happens. Yeah, and I believe I am, but I'm saying generally in life, I wouldn't consider myself a present person. I'm not the person who is enjoying the moment. Not present. But I am now because I'm focused. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but, the, yeah, but now yeah. I'm focused. But do you see the difference in the quality of the interaction we just had? But what's the... Okay, let me ask do you a you question. Do you see the difference, though? I do. Yeah, and do. How, how did that feel? It felt fine, but what's the difference? Fine, what's the difference? But what's the difference? <laughs> but weren't we more connected in some way? Isn't there more possibility to get to something deeper or something more truthful there when your mind is not constantly running? But I haven't lied to you. I'm not saying you've lied to me. Yeah. I'm not saying you've lied to me. I just said there's other levels, there's other layers, right? Is there? Is there? It, you get to it, that's why you fight. That's what you said, because it gets you out of your mind, fully in your body. And, and when you're fighting, you're in that zone. Some I'm of their focused. intelligence opens up, though. Yes. You're doing things. You can feel that guy, and you can miss the punch you by doing You don't even know why. Correct. Right? And Correct. so that is available all the time, if you're willing to get present. Does life require that degree of focus? Not focus, presence. I know, they're, they're slightly different. Maybe I, maybe I see them as the same. I don't see myself as a particularly present person. I do enjoy the presence of fighting. I do enjoy the presence of driving fast cars very fast. Right. I'm thinking of it, just so you understand my mental model, when I think of guys, and I do know some, who are like enjoying the moment, I very rarely enjoy the moment. Does that make sense? I don't ever, I'm sitting around and I'm like, yeah, I look around and go, I'm having fun. That's just not how my brain works, ever. That feels sad to me. Yeah, but this is the thing. Perhaps it is. I don't know. I'm not going to say it is because I don't feel sad about it. But let's imagine it is sad. I have no fear of feeling sad. Mm. If someone were to say to me, Andrew, you're going to enjoy the moment less because you're constantly preoccupied with running an empire that most people wouldn't believe is as large as you say it is even if you told them. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have unlimited offspring who adore you. And you're going to have unlimited female interaction from women who truly would die for you and you're gonna be one of the most respected men on the planet, and you're gonna have street cred in every city from Baltimore to Berlin, and you're gonna end up going through all these trials and tribulations, and they're gonna talk about your name after you're dead for hundreds of years, but you're not gonna be present in the moment. Would you take that? And I would say, yes, sir, I would. Mm -hmm. Give that to me. I can't be present because there's too much happening. 
How can I be present? Well, you can how can I be present with hundreds of millions of dollars and Decart trying to put me in jail? And that, how can I be present? I've got things happening in my brain. I can't be present. I've got things to deal with. I've got problems. My, I I, so I've sacrificed but presence. But maybe you have a mental model that says I can't be all the way present and, and do all of those things. And maybe that model is incorrect. Well, presence is, is, if you're truly present, then you're not worried about anything outside of the moment you're in. Not necessarily. How does that work? This well, I'm interested. Yeah, I mean, because the, the presence, right? You can let your consciousness go out, right? And you're kind of, you can be aware of everything, yeah. right? I'm perspicacious is one of my favorite words. I am aware of what's happening. Yeah. I'm just not particularly interested in it. So I will sit at a table where everyone's having a conversation and I'll sit on my laptop and I'll chime up once every hour. I hear every word. I've analyzed every word. I know who's right. I know who's wrong. I know what I could have said. I know whose brain I could have changed, what mind I could have affected. I've already considered if it's worth doing, but if I'd rather do my work and I'll ignore it all until I pop up and say three words and control the entire conversation and go back to my laptop. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm aware of everything. I'm just not particularly present because I feel like I've built a life which is so large that it's hard for me to be present in the moment. I'm present with my children for an hour or two, mm -hmm. and then it's like, okay, right. back to work. Right. Right. So was your I, father, I, was your father present with you? No, but I don't think, but then this but, again, I'm just saying yeah. as a psychotherapist, when somebody said that, you said that very, he wasn't present with you. That must've been, that didn't bother me at all. It didn't bother you? No, he had things to do. He's a full grown man. I mean, I, you know, I could, we could talk about the, the haircut tweet, but yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't understand, yeah. you know, your history that you, you were raised by a single mother. Your, your father wasn't around. Yeah. Do you see him once a year? About that, yeah. One, mm -hmm. When we lived in America up to the age of 11, I saw him more often, once or twice a month maybe, and then... When did you, they split? I was 10 when they left. But I always understood he's very busy and has a lot to do. So I, I never... Could you, I didn't can you see how him. the boy might interpret that as my father doesn't care about me? No. You can see how, the, I understand you sitting here right now, but yeah. you understand like a little boy. I think a little boy might think, why boy. isn't, where's daddy? I want daddy, I'm here alone with mom. And he might be right because some fathers may not care, but my father did care. Right. He was just very busy. But it must've been confusing for you. No. Not for the little boy? No. Like, like bring, bring. I'm being honest, I'm being, <laughs> I'm being honest, I'm being honest. Okay. It wasn't, okay. I never for or, a or, or you cut off, or those feelings were so painful, overwhelming, you cut off from them so quickly and then created this mindset no. to deal with. I never for a second felt like he didn't care about me, ever. I, I never felt that. Uh -huh. It didn't cross my mind. Ra like uh, consciously. Consciously. Con but is it possible that unconsciously you might have a different belief? Some. And that, and that on some level, some of what you're doing in the world is motivated by that? Like wanting to, to win the love of your father? I think that is Semi-true, but I'll tell you, I'll, I think that's, Which that's fine. No, 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 fine. that's semi-true, but that's semi-true because I believe I have a duty to my ancestors. I don't think it's coming from a set, a place of I'm broken trying to fix myself. I think I have the last name Tate. It was bestowed upon me and I have responsibilities to live up to the last name Tate. Yeah. I do believe I have a duty to my ancestors. So is that trying to win the love of my father? Perhaps I never felt unloved by my father ever. In fact, I would argue I had the best father on earth. I never felt like I was owed all of his time. Mm -hmm. I was, it was very clear to me as a, at a young age that he's extremely busy and extremely important and that I can earn his time mm -hmm. or that I can't have as much of it as I want. You have to earn his time? Yeah, that was absolutely. the, yeah. a son should have to earn his father's time? Yeah, why not? Because he's a boy. True. And, and so the I father's would, love should be, you know, at least for a boy, unconditional in no, some way. Uh, love and time are not necessarily the same thing. Okay. If I told my father, I want to play chess, I want you to teach me chess, he could find two hours. If I said to dad, I want to play video games or let's watch TV together, he'd say, no son, I have things to do. Right. So to a degree, I had to earn his time. Yeah. His time was valuable and it could not be wasted. Yeah. I feel like I have a duty to my ancestors. I don't feel like, and when I'm in jail, I feel like I can't disappoint him and I feel like I do good for the world. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is me being some kind of broken secret. This is where we're going to disagree. You're going to think I'm some broken child inside broken, or something. Broken. Okay. Okay. Well, the no, inner no, child no, no, or no, I'm, just, I'm just, guessing, but well, yes, inner child. Okay. Yeah. I, I, don't yeah. I don't think it's, I don't think it's anything to do with that. An inner child? I think it's duty. I think I have duty well, and I have honor. Yeah. I understand you have duty as a man, but that doesn't mean the inner child is not there. And I guess that's if the, if the inner child has been disowned in some way or his, his feelings have been, uh, you know, relegated to the unconscious, like that, that's impacting you, that's affecting you. And knowing what those feelings are and how they impact you, I think would be important information for you. 
but I was never sad. I, I, I can't say I had a hard childhood. I can't say I was sad. I can't say I wish he was different. I, I once again, I and, and once again, let me psychoanalyze myself. Yeah. Once again, this might be rationale. I might be rationalizing. Yes. I might say, well, whatever happened made me the person I am today and I love who I am today, so I'm glad it was the way it was. Perhaps. But once again, I think that puts me in the correct mental framework to be as capable as possible. I'm not gonna sit here and say, I wish my dad did something else. That, well, What's the point? That's asinine. Both things can be true though. I wanted to see my father more. I wish he was there and he wasn't. And now I'm here and I'm gonna make the best of it. And this is, this is the result of that. And I've turned myself into this uh, beast because of it. I mean, you made the most of the situation, but that doesn't discount the place where you may have wanted more from I him. Think, you may have wanted more love, more connection, just more time. I, think, I think my father did the one, the best he knew how to do. And second, he did what exactly what was necessary to make me the person I am Would today. it be okay for you to be angry with your father? No, absolutely not. Why not? It's disrespectful. Why not? Why? Because he's my father. But, but I'm and not he, saying that you would have to confront him. I mean, obviously he's not here, yeah. but it's just like, uh, that's selfish, but, but if it's just a feeling, right? If it's just a feeling that wants to come it's ungratefulness. Hmm. Well, you're judging the feeling. Yeah, I am. Yeah. For me to sit and say to the man who made me the man I am today, yeah. who I, once again, never felt unloved by, who tried his very best to raise me, who sacrificed for me to exist, who gave me my last name, who bestowed upon me the honors and principles and morals I live by today, yeah. for me to be angry at him because he was busy some days would be brutally ungrateful. No, it's I'm not feeling. allowed. No, I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed that feeling. It's ungrateful. I refuse to accept it. I refuse to feel it. I truly believe I had the best father on earth. I truly believe it. I don't believe, even now, if, if I have sons, I don't talk about what children I have publicly, if I have sons or when I have sons or my sons I have, whichever one it is, they will get my time, sure. They will get my dedication, absolutely. But I have expectations of them because of their last name. And they're gonna have my time while we're working towards something fantastic. I'm, I'm not gonna just sit around with my kids just for hours because they just deserve it. There's no participation trophies in the Tate household. Right. And time, is, and time is a trophy and it must be earned like everything else in life. So I'm not gonna sit and have sons and go, well, he's my son, so we're just gonna all day do fucking nothing. No, we're gonna all day do something important. For sure. Or I'm gonna go do something important. And he can sit around and do nothing by himself. For sure, but you can also imagine if you saw if you ha if you had sons and you saw them once a year, that would have a, an impact on them. Like, would you? How would you feel about that if you had sons and you only saw them once a year? I think I'd miss them. Of course, they'd miss me. I bet, I you, I I bet I your dad missed you. Oh, completely, absolutely. I bet he was sad there. Oh, completely. And I wonder if he had self judgment about it. I wonder if he questioned himself. Well, I think as a man, because you would, I don't think would you do that. Well, as a man, you have to make a choice. And I think it used to be more binary than it is today because of the nature of money and empire mm -hmm. and how things work. But as a man, you have to make a choice. You either go to war and come back with stories or you sit at home all day and be a second mother and, and then you're not a man. It's, you have to find the balance between the two, right? Yeah. My father was away a lot, but he wasn't away a lot because he was doing nothing, right? Oh. So if you have a soldier as a, as a father, okay, he's not there but he's doing something, he's coming back with a story. And I think that that was typical in a lot of households for a very long time. Maybe it's changed a little bit in modern times, but typically the man went away, yeah. did whatever he had to do, and then came back with a story or a hunt or whatever. For sure. So that's how I saw my father living his life. And that's how I want to live my life. Mm -hmm. I will do the same thing. I don't think I would be the same man if I decided to say, okay, I have a son now, so I'm just gonna stay at home. Mm -hmm. And I think that I need to be a kind of man my son wants to emulate, which means I have to be a hero, and I don't think a he you can be a hero sitting at home. So I think that I need to, yeah, he needs time, of course he does, but he also needs an example set, and that example must be set out there in the harsh, brutal realities of the real world. So, yeah, it's you time, you could, now the argument is quantity of time versus quality of time. And I would argue that the quality of time I will give my sons is gonna be much higher than you enough. Want, you would want to give them that. Oh, completely. You'd want to give your sons more quality time than you had with your father? I'll give them the exact same amount as he gave me. <laughs> Will you? But if I'm happy with Would you, you not want to give them more? I may want to. You wanted more. I, w may I didn't say I wanted more. Oh. That, that's <laughs> smart. I didn't say I wanted more. You didn't? Yeah, no. You must have. No, I'm saying that. Who wants time with his daddy? How can, I mean, it has to be true. If I wanted it, I could have earned it any time I wanted. Wow. Well, May, may, you, are you sure about that? I'm pretty sure, yeah. He th I mean, when we go, I mean, we, I don't know if we need to read the tweet, but it's yeah. like, um, 
uh, your mom was pretty upset with him. So there was a, he was like, I'm not coming back here. I mean, it wasn't just about you, it was yeah. about your mother. Oh, completely. And I think my father sacrificed his marriage for us boys. Mm -hmm. He sacrificed his marriage and his relationship with my mother to ensure that us boys were taught the way he believed we should be raised. Mm -hmm. My mom was very unhappy with certain things he did, which he insisted on doing anyway, because he saw his legacy in us as more important than his marriage with my mother. But I'm, I'm not saying, look, if my son calls me and says, I'm really upset, I need to talk to you, I'm not gonna say, no, you can't talk to me. I'm not, I'm not psycho, right? I understand all of these things. I'm just saying, in, in, obviously we're talking about a very general scenario. The general scenario is, I'm a man, I'm away at war, I come home with a story, or if I'm spending time with my son, I want us to be building to him as an individual. I believe that the mother does a lot of the day-to-day -day keeping the child alive, changing diapers, feeding them, mm -hmm. et cetera. And the man is the one who instills a lot of the mindset. And the man is the one who grows them in, in very important ways. And I think to do that, I need to be a man of genuine capability. And I would argue that the two hours a month or two hours a week or whatever I spent with my father him being the man he was, mm -hmm. was worth more than the 200 hours a month that most men spend with their fathers. That's why I am the man I am. Yeah. So there'll be some fathers who sit and say, I could never do that to my son. Well, what can you do? You can go do fucking basically nothing with your life, pay your taxes, come home, be bitched at by your wife, be quiet about it, and be with your son all the time. Mm -hmm. Sure, you win in quantity of time, but who you are as a man and what the lessons you can really teach you lose in quality of time. So I believe my father was such a fantastic figure that it's the quality of his time that made up for the quantity. And the only way to do that is to go out in the world and be fantastic. And we can actually extrapolate this out to other things. Let's look at relationships, for example. Mm -hmm. I see men who spend every day with their woman. That's fantastic. That's fine. That's how he elicits her love and Are her attention. Are you rationalizing? I'm completely. <laughs> that's how he, I am. I'm okay. a, that's how my brain works. Yeah, yeah. I see men who spend every day with a woman, which is fantastic. He wants to, she wants to, that's great. They're happy. She feels loved and she feels respected and she's glad she has all of his time. Mm -hmm. When you reach a certain quality of man, a certain level of man in terms of competence, a certain echelon, I don't have to spend all day with a woman. I can see a woman one hour a month and she'll be loyal to me mm -hmm. because I'm me. Right. Because the quality of who I am and the quality of my time outweighs the quantity which can be offered by a lesser being. Yeah. So you can... Put this in nearly any dynamic. You put it in a romantic relationship and also in, sure. a, in, in a family dy yeah. dynamic. Once you reach a certain level of competence, once you're at the highest echelons of human achievement, your time is by extension more valuable and it extrapolates out. Yeah. An hour with the president is worth more than 100 hours yeah. with a guy at McDonald's. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah. So I think my father raised me by not being there. He raised me by being out there and doing so many fantastic things and being such a fantastic individual that I understood I had a duty to him and a duty to my last name and I can't be his son and not be fantastic. So I think he raised me in absence. That's what I think he did. You're proud of yourself that you got there. So yeah. <laughs> you won but, that one. But I think no, I, that's good. No, that, that's, a, that's actually a fair argument. That would be the argument about God's will. That was God's will. Correct. Yeah. And so I have to surrender to it, and this is what it is, and, yeah. and my task is to, is to deal with it. And maybe, and maybe there are feelings you have about it that you don't fully understand, but that's okay. Yeah. You know, you're here now, and you're doing your thing, and you're living your life, and it's yeah. all good. Yeah.